this is one one of the things uh, and then just wave it wave at me when we're rolling dakota please she said count, to 30. count to 30 and then we're going I, I'm having a hard time counting. That's okay. <laughs> because I'm just saying that I, I'm just going to assume that we're that we're, that we're close because they can trim the very first part okay. of it, and I'll. I'll <clears throat> and we'll, we'll even let that plane go by because there's a the, the, the normally that that we're that we're having. Tell me about. Hold on. Let me start again. Mariana, you brought children into this world, right? Four of my own and two stepchildren, yes. What was that like growing a human being inside <laughs> of you? What, what, what was that like? I will tell everyone I was the most miserable pregnant woman in the whole <laughs> world. I hate pregnancy. Childbirth I would do a million times. Every single experience was different. Each child is totally unique and amazing. Um, all I ever wanted to be was a mommy. All I ever wanted to do was have my own family and I cook and I sew and I love to decorate and I even started off homeschooling the first two and then the third came along and he was a little boy that we we jokingly called Spider Pig right. from The Simpsons because <laughs> At nine months, before he could even walk, he had this incredible upper arm strength and was climbing the walls. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. And um, so childbirth was awful, but it is incredible to have that ability. And and it also, um, you know, is the closest I've ever felt to realizing my existence for being, my... Wow. My purpose on but this that, planet. That, but that wanting to be the, the homemaker and to be part of that and then to be on the national stage <laughs> being the head of this, uh, of the Butterfly Center, being a business development specialist because that's what you do. You come in, you organize, you get people together, you get the boards together, you work them and get them moving in that. Those two things Move right along together. Oh, I don't know. I never wanted to have a job outside of the home, but certainly having four little people running around teaches you to anticipate. <laughs> it's <laughs> good <laughs> transferable <laughs> skills, right? Yes. What are they going to do next? What's going to happen <laughs> then? And blah, 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 blah. And to be incredibly organized. And, uh, and, and, and also, I think, gave me a, a, a sense of hyper-responsibility. Yeah. You know, not only for them, but for the world that I've brought them into. And, yeah, I've always done business development and communications and and uh, not as a coach, as mm -hmm. a consultant. I don't have yep. the temperament for coaching people, yes. <laughs> but um, I do not have that. Um, but I, I never in a million years would have imagined that I would be in this place at this time with this role. I was mm -hmm. hired to write grants and do donor development and develop, uh, you know, educational programs exactly. and, uh, you know, get the gift shop functioning and mm -hmm. uh, all of, you know, get the right people in the right place. Um, and that's what I did mostly up yeah. until 2017, that fateful day mm -hmm. that that turned everything upside down. So if we're going to, all right, your next steps are what? How far ahead can you see? Because on the first two programs that we talked about, we talked very much about the, the, the problem and, and some of the challenges, how they are up to date. How do you look ahead and look at what you what is going to be on your, on your plate in the next slices of time? Um. You know, I am, we've got a court date finally set. So we filed an appeal in our mm -hmm. lawsuit and- This was the one that was dismissed. The one that was summarily dismissed with the judge citing reasons for dismissal that weren't even part of our lawsuit. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just, you know, yep. it was an obvious hack job. So that happens December 5th. We'll see what plays out mm -hmm. there. 
uh, because at and that is an appeal to the Court of Appeals? The Court of Appeals in the District of Columbia. D.C. Court of Appeals, all right. So we will see what happens. How are you funding a lawsuit like that? Where, do, where or who is supporting? Our members have been supportive and then um, we had a uh, GoFundMe. Basically, when, when the Appropriations Act mm -hmm. uh, was passed, actually funding wall through us, we announced a public appeal, please help us, you know, fight sure. this. And people have been quite generous. Who knows how much more support we will need? You know, it's, it's, at this point, it's never ending. Yes. You know, we'll. So where are we allowed to contribute then? People are allowed so to contribute. So we can put that, put the CG, which will magically, Jonathan will put on, on <laughs> right here and say, here is yes, where to here's go. Yes, here's the link to contribute to our Defend the National Butterfly Center is, Good. you know, is the campaign. So we've got that happening, you know, if we were to have someone like Bernie Sanders elected, mm -hmm. he has already proclaimed that he would halt all border wall construction, uh, maybe even tear down the mm -hmm. walls that exist. That would be a dream come true. Sure. But I think it may be too much to dream. Instead, I do, you know, short term, mm -hmm or God forbid, we sure. have another four years of what we have now, resistance, real resistance of border mm -hmm. wall construction anywhere on the southern border will be the excuse this administration is seeking for martial law. And when, when you talk about this administration, doesn't our Texas legislature and Texas uh, our governor and all, wouldn't that, I mean, it seems like we're very, we're very, in Texas we have this, this private property and, and by God, don't take our, you know. The and Gonzales we're going, Cannon uh, and that, all Exactly, that. which was actually, actually, that's hilarious about the Gonzales Cannon. It was a fire, it was only <laughs> meant to scare Indians. It was this little tiny pipe. Yeah. It is not what we're, yeah. uh, uh, typical men, we do tend to want to make it larger than, <laughs> than, than it actually is. And I, so I laugh every time I see that, but that's, that's the yeah. point. Well, so on that note, uh, no, um, our, um, our state representatives and state senators for the most part uh, have been silent. Uh, Terry Canales, Ryan Guillen, Judith Zaffarini are the three off the top of my head that I know have said, and Filimon Vela, yeah. who started off saying, take your wall and shove it, President yeah. Trump. But you know what? Now that all this money's coming into the port of Brownsville, he's gone silent. He's not speaking out against the contamination of our beaches or the fire hazard that is SpaceX as it lights the National Wildlife Refuge ablaze. He's suddenly not fighting any of this, which I find incredibly suspicious. The, um, you know, Democrats and Republicans have supported border walls and barriers right. and fences. So it's not a, a sin that belongs to just one party, but the state of Texas, yeah, the one and only republic ever in this United States, exactly, has betrayed us all. You know, when the Bureau of Land Management came for Texas private property on the northern border, mm -hmm. the battle for the Red River, right. Then Governor Perry and Attorney General Abbott said, hell no, over our dead bodies. This is Texas. We fought for every inch of it. You're not getting it. Everybody stood up and fought back. Exactly. But now that it's the southern border. I, I'm not hearing yeah, anything. No, no. And, you know, our governor is married to a first-generation American. Her parents are immigrants. Her mother, Cecilia's mother, doesn't even speak English. And all Texans would be wise to remember that when he ran for election last time, the very first commercials Abbott launched were in Spanish and aimed at the Hispanic population. Mm -hmm. And now he sides with President Trump, who says Mexicans are dogs and rapists and murderers. 
It, it just it, it it breaks it it breaks my heart when I know. I I, I was in uh, Mexico City and I was and I I was at the at the the anthropological museum and I'm sitting there. They have these huge heads of the of the. Uh, um, of the Aztecs, and they have these these huge heads, and the side you can see from the nose, you can see that beautiful nose from the side, and I and their little children were walking past, uh, little little uh, elementary school children, and I looked and I looked up and down at the profiles, and I went, <laughs> oh my God, and all the engineering. All of the math, all of the art, all of that is way is just waiting to be unleashed. I mean, this is the most, the worst use of uh, it's an awful use of res uh, waste of resources when we're not when we're not investing in this. I mean, I know I we we see we see it in the infrastructure that is being kept up in the United States by. Oh my gosh! I mean, what are we having to do in Texas? Drain three lakes? because the dam won't hold? When T. Boone Pickens, Texas oil men billionaire said, water is the new oil. Absolutely. And in Texas, we're letting our infrastructure fail such that we're losing this other precious resource. And then we're building pipelines all across the state, mm -hmm. contaminating the land that you know, the one, the best, not the one lesson, but probably the best lesson I ever got from my mother came from my grandparents. Mm -hmm. And they said, they're never making more land. Nope. Now you're not, you don't come from a hippy dippy, uh, far left, uh, far left uh, <coughs> out there, uh, peace, love, and all, all, all no, background. I don't. You, you, that's not the way you come to this activist. No, place. Um, I think the only thing my mother probably protested and felt, well, there are two things. I do know that, uh, you know, the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. She lost so many classmates, you know. She says basically that it, it decimated her senior class in high yep. school. And then um, a woman's right to choose. Mm -hmm. She had a friend that she lost to a back alley abortion. Yep. And um, so those were two causes that I know were important to her. Now, legalizing marijuana or... <laughs> You know, uh, <laughs> immigration reform or, yes. you know, there are probably a million other causes that, yep. that she was not ever going to get behind then. Now she does seem to understand that, you know, uh, we should just legalize marijuana and tax it. You know, it's not yeah. hurting anybody. Just what are we going to I mean, this is the, 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 thing, the thing is this world. This world of 2019 and all, we're watching an, th th this in incredible change, the kind of skills that it's going to take for the kids to succeed, for the people to succeed. This, this gray wave of m me and your mother's age and then <laughs> you're, that, you're, that are having to be taken care of. I mean, I love the phrase, okay, boomer. <laughs> This is, this, I, 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 we're getting that. We, we, my wife and I say it to each other. Okay, boomer. Okay, boomer. <laughs> that's, that's fine about what we're, what we're having because that's what, I mean, you have this tsunami. And I'm Gen X. And, I know. And the, 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 our <laughs> joke now is, where is the generational hatred against us? We would welcome it because it would be the first time anybody ever paid attention to us. The neglected. <laughs> the, the neglected. The latchkey kid generation. And, um. But, but, you know, back to this background, my father was 20, 19 years older than my mother. Wow. Very traditional Hispanic Catholic man. Wow. So, and a physician, but he also supported a woman's right to choose. Wow. You know, he was sort of radical in that, I guess. Uh, and, yes. you know, your body, your choice. But for him, as a physician, it was about everything, you know, not just your uterus, no. you know. But that's the, that's the whole thing. I mean, one of the things that Gloria Steinem, one of my heroes, uh, says is that 
The whole purpose is to control the means of reproduction. It is about controlling the means of reproduction and the U.S. has a falling birth rate. So the only influx of population we have is brown yep. and OTM, other than Mexican, as yep. Border Patrol labels them all, OTM. So what? OTM? OTM, that's the official phrase for other than Mexican. So whether you're from Asia or India or Guatemala, you're OTM. Ecuador. OTM. OTM. OTM is, is the official term. That's like the new N word. That's a, oh, that's awful. It OTM. Is, OTM. <sighs> and, uh, and so reversing Roe v. Wade now yep. still is not about making sure that African American or Hispanic or yep. Asian or Indian women can't have abortions. Right. It's about making sure that white women are forced to contribute to the population. Absolutely. And that's where and that's where where uh, th this is where the challenge has been. I mean, and how how are they And for people to understand that, you know, but no, I I grew up in a fairly traditional household. Um very uh I wouldn't say religious, but so my mother was Presbyterian, my father was Catholic. Mm -hmm. I was a religion minor focus in college. And I, growing up, I had friends that were Jewish and Baptist and this and that. And I went to everything, everything, everything. But the expectations were still, you know, sexual purity, uh, submit to your elders, especially exactly. your male elders. Yep. Um, I very much grew up in a home where women, uh, ch children were to be seen and not heard. Yep. Uh, a woman's role was in the house. Lucky for me, I loved being in the house. Mm -hmm. So I was totally cool with that. You bet. But I still was required to have a college education in the event I might have to support myself or my children. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I didn't, I didn't grow up in a household where Saturday mornings, my mom said, paint your sign, we're hitting the streets to pick it, yeah. whatever. Sure. Not, not at all. And it's something I'm still very uncomfortable with. I, I understand. So how are the kids, how do these four and the two stepkids view mama? Well, you know, they have uh, articles in the news recently about tiger moms and yeah. stuff. Well, the Mexican mother is legendary. The <laughs> I, was, I, I was thinking and abuelita. And the chancla. And the, yeah. I mean, the, <laughs> nothing good happens after midnight. <laughs> you have to take your brother with you. You know, like, <laughs> look it all up on YouTube, the, the Mexican mother. My children are like, you know, that's just our Mexican yep. mother. That's her. And, um, you know, the fact that I am fighting um, because... You know, hell hath no fury yeah. like Mexican mothers. Yeah. And, um, you know, there are there there is a city in Mexico, and now the name escapes me, but where the women ran the corrupt politicians and police out of town. Exactly. I, rem I remember reading about that. And this that. town now has no elected officials and no police force. The women are in charge yeah. of the community, and everybody has to just behave themselves. That's right. I, you know, I, I, How I, hard is that? I, I, I thought about that because I was trying to think of, for example, to go to an extreme example, but let's just say that the, that the hijackers who were uh, planning the, to fly into our uh, World Trade Centers, that if half of them were women, and in the planning session, do you think that they would have come up with that as a solution? I just because oh. I, I this is the this is what 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 I why I believe so much in the in in having gender diversity at the decision making level is because we cannot we as men we as men we are we are walled off from an ability to hit our heart when we're in that decision making process when we get that pressure going on we need to have the gender diversity at the level. We have to have it, but I have to say that if women had been a part of that team and planning and executing, that women would have chosen different targets, 
that would have resulted in higher body counts and more horror for this country wow. because we know what the truly soft targets are. Yes, exactly. And and uh, I just uh, here's my my question is is that if we can get enough women, we can see where those where where the targets are because the targets. The important thing is is you educate your children. You make that there's your target. There's your opportunity. There, this is where you can really get your. You, you, you make sure that in the early years that the that the children can, uh, the the mothers and the fathers can have early childhood and and daycare center and have so that they can contribute. You make sure that they're doing because this is our future. This is our future, and the countries that uh, would destroy our way of life that see us as an enemy they're making huge investments in their children and not in ways that are beneficial for us. You know, you can see the propaganda videos, the training videos online, and those countries include, um, you know, places like Russia and, uh, and their outposts around the world. And this is who the wealthy in this country have allied themselves with. Do you think that there can be enough uh, of a change in the ways of thinking, in the ways of being, that we can, as we were talking about in an earlier program, the concept of enough. I mean, to think of a number that you would say, okay, well, if I get it, this, it's enough for me. Because I'm trying to think of how would I think enough for the general public comes in increments. Um, hearkening back to conversations I had with Beto O'Rourke, and yeah. there was actually an article about this in one of the big newspapers, uh, it might have been the Dallas Morning News, about how um, the Christian women, mm -hmm. married women, were voting against their husbands and voting their conscience and voting for Beto and all right. this, how he had his, this appeal with them. And I had told Beto and others that people like me were actually his base, would be the ones to get him elected mm -hmm. because the number one rule is don't fuck with our kids. Absolutely. That means don't fuck with my kid who decided to try marijuana exactly. and got busted. Don't fuck with my kid who might be, you know, uh, gay or, or queer or transgender right. or trying to figure it out or whatever. Don't fuck with my kid who, you know, yep. they're, 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 they're these things that are turning the tide yep. on major issues like drugs and sexuality and, you know, and moms are doing that across America. I agree. But we can't take our foot off the gas. And, mm -hmm. you know, you talk about soft targets in our children. The gun violence in our schools is a huge issue. Mm -hmm. And it's a point of conflict for many, many reasonable people, I think, because we don't want the young, angry, mentally disturbed mm -hmm. white male to have a gun and go shoot up our school, but we also don't want to be uh, confronted by a paramilitary police force like Border Patrol committing egregious criminal acts even on our own lands and have to go after them with a shovel. No, and and that's that's the 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 thing that that concerns me about that, Mariana, because I'm trying to think of how, what kind of weapon I would need to combat a military organization that is, that is coming after me. I think ultimately, as is happening in Bolivia today, yes. you have to have people of conscience. Yes. That would include um, our police, our military, Mm -hmm. Turn and stand with the people. When you when you look when you talk to some of the border patrol 
and you look them in the eye and you say, Son, do you know what you're doing here? What do they say? Most of them say, I'm just following orders, which again, <laughs> I, uh, Nazi Germany, I'm just mm. following orders. And um, it's, how it, it, it's how it happens. That's exactly how it happens. And, you know, Border Patrol agents, I mean, you look at this across the country, you can go into any big city. They actively recruit people from zip codes and skin colors who have been oppressed by police. They co-opt them and they give them a gun and a badge. They give them authority. They put them on the other side of that thin blue line or that thin green line and then use them as poster boys and girls for this uh, continued oppression or infliction or injustice, the wrongs that are done. But the money, the benefits, the pensions are too good to pass up. I hear that from so many Border Patrol right. agents. And I do tell them, so you sold yeah. your soul for a paycheck yep. Yep. or a pension. And that is where we get an opportunity to leave it and only, only that we get the chance to continue this in the future. Mariana, muchísimas gracias, comadre. A usted. <sighs> Boy, that last one was all over the board. <laughs>